I am Daniel Madison. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. I really do appreciate you choosing to spend your time with me when you could be doing better things with yourself right now. Had a bit of time off. What's the big deal? So I chilled out for a bit. I took a week off. Longer than a week, in fact. Back at it right now. I'm so excited to get back into these videos. I really missed posting videos, but time off was absolutely vital and necessary when you feel yourself slipping you gotta realign your life you gotta get back on track and that's what i did chilled out took my cameras didn't film too much in fact here's everything that i filmed You see, I found even carrying the camera around with me a little bit of a distraction. I just wanted to chill out and shut down from everything. Rest, relaxation, what are the other ones? Rest, relaxation, ref, um, Red Bull, no, that's not it. Reflex, reflections, ref, reflect, time to reflect. Reflecting, revitalization. Necessary, absolutely necessary back after a week i really did miss filming being on camera sharing making content and i'm so excited to come back with a strong video yes 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 i am daniel madison and this is the madison deck review episode number i am daniel madison and this is the madison deck review episode number five Guess you could call this one a mystery deck review. I've got this idea, I've got a bunch of playing cards that you guys have sent to me. I'm just gonna tip them out in front of the camera. We're gonna look at a few of them and then I'm gonna pick one that I will review seriously right now in this video. So let's, uh, let's take a look at those playing cards. So I've actually just grabbed a handful uh, from the bin. Um, and I'm just going to tip these out, we're going to have a look and um, decide together, collectively, which which deck we're going to review. So this is what we're looking at right now, let me bring you a little bit closer. So we'll go for the biggest one first, this one's actually from Singapore. Envelope 1, 6 decks of Mantecor playing cards. So this is a very orange tiger looking deck, very inspired by bicycle playing cards. Concept by Benjamin Liu, designed and illustrated by Edo Huang. We're Spock, Edo. Is, is it Edo or Edo? You make a lot of cool playing cards, my friend. Printed in Taiwan by Legends Playing Card. Company co produced by Card Volution. Yo, I've got a lot of respect for Card Volution. I'm gonna open these up and, and quickly have a look at these ones, but I don't think this episode is gonna be uh, dedicated to these playing cards. But I'll, I'll, any links I find, I'll put in this video description. Manticore playing card. Very dark, kind of orange, lovely tigers on there. The tigers actually have blue eyes, I think. Manticore playing cards. These feel actually quite strange right out of the box. Um, quite thick, very different feel. I can imagine these being pretty good for um, for some table work. A lovely joker with the tiger on there. Um, instantly I'm looking at these pips. The Ace of Clubs has a tiger on. The card core cards have been changed. The Ace of Hearts has a tiger. Um, it's a diamonds tiger. The reds are a little bit dark. There's a double backer in there overall. Oh, the ace of spades is quite nice. Nice thin borders reminds me very much. It looks very in influenced by the bicycle back design. Not the biggest fan of this deck, but I can imagine a lot of people being a fan of this deck. And by the way, I was about to give this a rating, uh, but I don't think it's fair to do that for, for decks that I'm not actually uh, reviewing officially on this channel. Thank you though for sending me these uh, six decks Manticore playing cards. I will link those in the description. Envelope number two. Two. WH decks playing cards and card street. 
I've not seen these guys before, there is a note. Let's have a little a bit of um, attention to detail there on the packaging, very nice. WH decks, very nice looking deck of playing cards. Let's open these up. It's a very, very strange box that I cannot figure out how to. So this is interesting, this, this box actually has an, an extra kind of, an extra layer of protective, uh, uh, what the took is kind of glued down onto the top. You have to tear a piece off before you open it. That's interesting. I think these are from Brazil. I don't know. WH, my guys, let's have a look. Wow, that is a trip. Look at this design. Yo, this deck is actually pretty cool. Um, the, the design's kind of out there. It's really out there. It's a lot of kind of dot work, square, small dot work. I imagine this being a one-way deck, and it, I'll be very surprised if this was, wasn't marked. I believe this is a marked deck. Very smart, taking advantage of the black dots. This is a marked deck of playing cards. This is a completely custom deck of playing cards. Uh, I'm quite impressed with this deck. I'm gonna actually use this deck. Thank you so much for sending me this deck. WH deck, sorry for my English. I'm using Google Translator. My name is Wesley. I own the WH decks and we are from Brazil. We made the first Brazilian deck for cardistry, magicians and gamblers, our deck has a marking system and we are sending a unit of our deck for you. Hope you enjoy it. And we challenge you to unfold the marking system from Wesley Hudson. Wesley, what a cool deck. On to the next deck. Millennium Luxury Edition playing cards. Let's take a look at these designed by Keshav Mongia, produced by Galaxy Design. I've not seen or heard of these before. The United States playing out company, so you know that this is a good quality deck playing card. Let's open these up, have a quick look. So this to me appears to be quite influenced by the Tally Ho fan back playing card design. It has elements that seem to be extracted directly from the Tally, Tally Ho fan back. Correct me if I am wrong. Not fan back, circle back. I get confused. Definitely inspired by Tally Ho though. There's a, a very simple reveal on the, um, what do you call those, the flaps? The flaps, yeah, Ace of Diamonds reveal on the flaps. What a word. Now that is a risky border. That's one of the thinnest borders I've ever seen, in fact. Very, very risky with uh, USPC going for thin borders because the way they print, they can sometimes, they can, in my experience, they can often uh, print uh, kind of off center, leaving a thicker bottle on one side, but this one looks very cool. Maybe they've cleaned up that problem by this point. A metallic gold, it's definitely not meta looks, but it, it's definitely, but it, it looks to me like um, metallic gold on very dark royal blue. Very, very nice colors that work well together. Kind of looks somewhat, um, somewhere between oriental and medieval. What? And they have carried the meta looks onto the faces, which I'm not too happy about. Ace of Spades, um, it's okay. I'm distracted completely by the fact that the blacks have been replaced by uh, the gold. The pips are all funny and in different directions. Then the diamonds and the hearts, instead of red, they are blue. And the, the diamonds have sh changed the shape of the diamonds and the clubs and the hearts. I can imagine a lot of collectors picking these up and really enjoying them. Thank you to all of our backers for making this project a reality. A special thank you to Jason. Thanks, Jason. Blaze, finances, what are these people? Oh, I get it. This is a Kickstarter thing. If you're thanking all the people who backed you. Thank you to Nicholas Mullins and Daniel Schneider for all your support. I'm happy to hear that Daniel had your back on this. Daniel knows what he's doing with a deck of playing cards. Thank you for sending me these playing cards. I will not be reviewing them in this episode. However, on to the next deck. Omar Renfro, my good friend. Thank you so much for sending these to me. These are Omar's Flamingo playing cards. Now, you sent me some of these a while ago and I believe it was this deck. This one's different to this very slightly. I think this was a prototype you sent me a while back. Can't thank you enough, man. You know I'm a huge fan of yours, a huge supporter of everything that you do and all the playing cards that you make. And back when you were talking about getting these produced, 
I had you back from day one, man. I'm not gonna fully review them right now on this channel, not yet anyway, but I do wanna give you a shout out. And I am a bit of a fanboy of these playing cards. The first deck, I actually opened these a while ago and was playing with them. You can kinda tell that this is a prototype deck. Um, I love the colors of this deck. You have changed the spades and clubs to baby blue, the hearts and diamonds are pink. Now I don't usually like that with a deck of playing cards that is designed to be used by magicians and designed to be used maybe for gambling such as, um, we'll go back to the millennium playing cards now. This deck to me looks like it could be a deck used by magicians. Um, and used at a card table until you see the faces of them. So it confuses me as a card player, it confuses me as a magician, and I wouldn't use them for that reason. Um, and for card history, they don't seem to, in, in my opinion, they don't seem to fit the criteria to be called a card history deck. I don't mean to criticize your deck, but I'm making these points um, just to support the points I'm gonna make about this deck, because this deck has changed the colors. Omar did include blue and pink on the faces, but this deck is designed purposefully to be a fun uh, deck, and it's obviously for cardistry, but saying that, I can use this for magic. It looks like the kind of deck that you'd see somebody using on Venice Beach, for example, maybe, perhaps. It's kind of a fun deck that I would love to just whip out of my pocket when I'm at a pub, when I'm at a bar, or when I have guests over, which is absolutely never because I don't have any friends. I can imagine taking this deck out of my pocket and having good fun with it. People would appreciate the colors and the vibe of it. It's got very, very good vibe. You've hit a really good point somewhere between serious art and a fun deck of playing cards. I can't tell you how much I'm a fan of this deck. I've been a fan of the idea since we spoke about it quite a few years ago and I'm so glad to have some of these. I'm gonna quickly open the new deck that you just sent me and see if there are any differences. Uh, I'm guessing not. The quality does feel a little bit better than the first deck. I'm sure that's because it was a prototype, um, but everything seems to be the same. Oh my, you will be seeing me using these playing cards um, in future videos, I'm a huge fan. Now it just occurred to me, this is the Madison Deck Review episode number five. I've shown you four decks already. Um, I have a bunch in front of me that I, I really do want to show you, but considering it's episode number five, I'm only going to show you five decks, so we've seen four. So the next deck I pick from this pile is going to be the deck review episode number five. So this one I'm going to be picky about because I'm spot for choice right here. Um, and there are two in front of me that I, I, I'm going to review. This one's going to be in this video. This one's going to be in the next one. In this video, considering that we just looked at a fun deck and we were talking about fun and being all happy and I think I should choose another fun deck of playing cards. Madison Deck Review Episode 5. We are going to take a look at these. I already opened these because I was so excited to get these. I have been playing with this very deck of cards right here for the past week. I took it away with me and it brought so much happiness into my life. These are tasty cards and I'm going to review them right now. Now I've held back on doing a bit of research and finding out about these guys because I wanted to save that process to share with you guys on film for the deck review. I knew I was going to review these decks at some point and I'm so happy about these. So they sent me three decks of these. I'm going to keep two. I'm going to give one deck away to somebody watching this video right now. Hansen Chen Production Co. Printed in Taiwan. Respock Hansen Chen. Tasty playing cards, one of 1,000, are you kidding me? I really hope that I can get some more of these, man. Designed by Peter Uskanga, Uskanga, am I saying that right? I'm, I'm terrible at pron pron pronunciation. Luxury paper stock, 2018. Yeah, man, I, wanna, I hope I can get some more of these because these are cool as... Anyway, Tasty playing cards. So this was a kickstart project. Tasty playing cards, perfect for card stream magic. Are you ready to feel the sweetness in your hands? Yes. 85 backers pledged. What? 85 backers pledged. 99,000 Mexican pesos. 
What the? F that actually sounds like a, a lot more than what it actually is. It's like five, five thousand pounds. The most delicious and unique playing cards ever made. I agree. This project's currency is MXN. When converted to USD, you will find that the numbers are much more lower than what it initially looks like. I wish I'd have read that before I reacted. General features limited edition, 980 decks and 20 uncuts. No reprints. God damn it. 52 playing cards plus two jokers, poke size, magic finish, luxury paper stock produced by Hanson Chen with Spock. The cards, after one year of planning and design, we have created tasty playing cards, a deck inspired by ice cream for the magicians and cardists from around the world. Our design is totally original and limited. We will only print unique colors that resemble 3D while you make fans and flourishes. No doubt you want to try it. Yes, I did and I agree. These are great. And if I keep reading, that will basically be my deck review. So I'm gonna stop reading that. Hanson Chen, I'm gonna keep thanking you for sending me these. Please send me some more, please, please, please. Let's open these up and take a look. Now, although I didn't initially intend to review this deck in this episode, I definitely did want to review this deck on this channel. I spent the past week playing with one of these decks of playing cards and I cannot speak highly enough of these playing cards. Tasty playing cards by Hans and Jen. Let's take a close look at the details. The box is gorgeous. I mean, the first thing that you notice when you get these is this is an ice cream cone on the front. You see the ice cream dripping. And when you open the tuck, the, the half moon, the crescent, creates a lovely ice cream. And who doesn't like ice cream, especially strawberry? Would it be weird if I licked that? Yeah, it probably would. This is a really nice looking box. Um, it, it looks like something that you would pick up from an ice cream truck. I love the fun attention to detail on the box. Tasty playing cards on one side. Hanson Chen Production Company printed in Taiwan on the other with Hanson's logo. Tasty playing cards, one of 1,000. Designed by Peter Yuskanga. If I'm saying that wrong, please correct me. Luxury paper stock, 2018. The back design is featured on the back of the box. Let's take a look at the playing cards themselves. No printing inside the box. I'm a fan of that. Now this looks like something you could eat straight out of the box. It looks like one of those ice cream wafer sandwich things. Does anybody remember those? I used to love those when I was a kid. You got the strawberry flavor dripping down and Hanson, if you don't do like a, a chocolate flavor or, or a vanilla flavor version of these, I will be very upset. So the playing cards are really nice. The back design is so much fun. That pink is just divine. The white borders are just right. They're not too thin, they're not too thick. Um, this isn't a one-way design, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't need to be because this deck isn't designed for gambling. Obviously, you wouldn't take this to a gambling table, to a card table. That's why it is the perfect weapon for a card cheat. Imagine taking this to a card game and cheating with it. Nobody would suspect a thing. The Jokers are the Tasty Playing Card logo, uh, simple ice cream. Now these are identical. I appreciate that so much and so will many magicians because using two identical playing cards in a deck of playing cards is essential for many, many tricks. The spades and the clubs are very, very light brown to resemble or reflect or represent the wafer of the back design, nice touch. The diamonds are pink and so are the hearts. And just like I was saying with Omar Renfro's deck, this is a fun deck of playing cards. It's not to be taken too seriously. Fashion, I don't know if I want to use that word, but it definitely is a designer deck. To me, this works as a piece of art, but also something you could have so much fun with. And I really do appreciate, even though you've changed the, the pips on all the cards, it is very minimal, very subtle, very simple. I'm a huge fan. And the court cards, you've removed all of the color and replaced it with just the light brown for the spades and clubs, I believe. Let me check. Yes, and the diamonds and hearts 
uh, solid pink so there really is only two colors in this deck the light brown and the pink the diamonds the same things happen with the pips are all unique but I really do love the minimal simplicity there's not much else to say about this deck of playing cards visually it's just strikingly beautiful so much fun to play with I've been playing with one of these decks for over a week the quality is is fantastic it's lasted me all that time I've mainly been just doing the, the mess around things that you do I want to call it practice maybe a little bit of flourishing a little bit of this a little bit of that what and with production details set aside I'm, I'm gonna leave you with my opinion the quality of this deck is is fantastic you know you can't go wrong I've been gambling with this deck I've been flourishing I've been doing all kinds of sleight of hand and just regular shuffle and it handles exactly how I would expect a good quality deck of playing cards to handle I'm a huge fan speaking of how this deck handles let's see what it looks like on film Tasty playing cards by Hansen Chen, 100% deserves it, 10 out of 10. This goes straight into the top of my collection. I love using this deck, I, I love performing with this deck, it brings a smile to everybody's face, including mine. I only wish that I could get more of these somehow. If you get a chance to pick these up, everybody watching, if you get a chance to pick these up, get some if you can find some get some i can't recommend them highly enough i will be watching hanson chen very closely because i'm very excited to see what he's working on next and what other decks he's going to bring to the world of playing cards in the industry that seems to constantly be changing sometimes in a bad direction sometimes in a good direction and thanks to people like hanson chen and playing cards like these the playing card world and this industry is moving in a really positive and good directions there's a lot of there are a lot of creators out there, people making playing cards. It's so easy these days to make your own deck of playing cards. There's so many people are, are putting playing cards out without really thinking and without the, the right advice. And you see so many terrible playing cards. So it's really nice to see good playing cards turning up. Hansen, 10 out of 10, thank you for sending me these. I admire you and I really do admire this deck. Can't speak highly enough about tasty playing cards. Um, I'm going to keep this one in my deck, but one of the decks, the third deck that you sent me, I'm going to give away to somebody watching this video right now. It's a very simple idea that I do, that I do, that I do, that I do in all of my videos, in all of the deck review videos. Simply leave a comment below telling me why you think I should send you these playing cards. I will pick the best answer or the one that stands out to me the most, and I will send you an unopened deck of tasty playing cards along with a signed deck of pink Madisonist playing cards. Leave a comment below, tell me why I should send you these. Now the last deck review that I did was the Black Roses playing cards, Daniel Schneider or Spock. The winner of the Black Roses playing cards and a signed deck of Madisonist playing cards from the last video is... No, I don't usually do this, but I know which deck I'm going to review in the Madison Deck Review episode 6. So I'm going to show it to you guys right now. So you can tune in next time to see me reviewing Marty Gilbert Hidden Leaves playing cards. Cannot wait to open these. I haven't opened these yet. I'm going to save that for the video. Join me in episode 6 and we'll take a look at these playing cards together. I'll be back soon with a few update videos, including the meetup that I'm having in the UK in Leeds this coming Sunday. More episodes on the way. I took a week off and now back at it. I'm glad to be back.
thank you for watching this video. I am Daniel Madison. I do appreciate your time and I will see you next time.